Hello cave dwellers, it's Tuesday. How are you all doing? Um, I'm really sorry that you didn't get a vlog yesterday. I managed to put my back out, not majorly. Uh, it was after a really nice weekend of gardening and DIY, which was absolutely fine. And then I came in and lifted the box for this, the 3D printer I've been building. And uh, when I lifted it, something went ping. Uh, but it wasn't, it was just muscular. And after a good night's sleep, um, I'm moving a lot more easily. So. I wasn't in the best of moods for making a video. You would have just had me growling at you. So <laughs> that's why you didn't get one yesterday. I hope you all had a really nice weekend. It was a bank holiday Friday and Monday here in the UK. So uh, most people got those days off, but I don't think it makes such a difference to people at the moment with so many people working from home. And I'm sure many of you had barbecues. It, it was perfect barbecue weather. Just a shame we can't all meet up. But I got a few beers in anyway, and I hope you did too. It was a really nice weekend. Anyway, um, yeah, the video I'm working on at the moment this week is the 3D printer. Building it, it's kind of turned into a tutorial because it's my first 3D printer, so I can't really sit here and claim to be an expert on the matter. It's more first impressions. Did, did it go well? What problems did I run into? And the objective at the end of it is to print a part for the PC Engine so that I can finish off the PC Engine series in a non-destructive way without screwing holes, uh, drilling holes into the case, which I don't want to do. And many of the people in the comments said they didn't want to see me do, which I agree with, um, actually. So that's why I've got a 3D printer and it's gone well. I think I should have the video finished in the next couple of days. Let me show you my first ever 3D print. Isn't that glorious? A great success, I think you'll agree. <laughs> okay, I had a few teething problems, but it's all part of the learning process. And this was a much more involved build than I thought it would be, which has translated to understanding the machine and getting to know all the parts a, a lot better, which uh, is no bad thing, providing you've got the time to do it. Anyway, we've continued, we've, like I'm some kind of massive TV studio, I've continued to receive your emails, your show and tells, your cave tours. So thank you very much for keeping them coming in. I'm going to grab the laptop now, the laptop, the laptop, and uh, I'll just continue what I'm doing. I'm just grabbing the oldest videos as they come in on a first come first serve basis and taking a look. So let's do that now. Okay, uh, Chris Winters is next in the queue and I've set the camera to actually focus on me and not on the 3D printer, but you know how it is on this channel, the second channel, it's, it's raw run as, as it comes. So I'm not going to redo that. Anyway, so here's Chris. Let's see what he's got to say. Hi, Neil. And Hi, Chris. And uh, cave dwellers as well, if this makes it on. Um, as I said to you in one of my comments uh, on your channel, Neil, I don't really have a, a cave to share yet because I'm at the start of my recollecting journey. That's A cave doesn't have to be a space. A cave, your cave, the cave. It's a state of mind. Doesn't necessarily have to be a space. <laughs> where I'm at um, and the real genesis of, so really this is a show and tell rather than a, than, a, than a cave tour, is the Amiga 500 Batman pack. I live in Australia, even though I'm originally from England, had one of these as a kid. You reach mid forties and you go, what's that deep yearning hole in my life? Oh, that's right. It's, it's, it's shaped to fit something from my past and it's the Amiga 500 Batman pack. And if I have another one of those, it'll make me happy. Do you know what? Yes, yes, that worked. Um, so this is in fantastic condition. You can see it there fired up behind me with a custom version of Workbench 1.3. Um, and it's, it's in fantastic condition, but actually that's not what I want to share with you today. What I want to share with you today is this worthless keyboard. 90 seconds, you say. So worthless keyboard that I picked up off the side of the road and it's your fault, Neil, and similar channels showing how to pull something like this apart um, and, and rebuild it, clean it up. I'll put some photos in now. <laughs> so that's why my show and tell is this worthless. I wasn't ready for that. I needed more warning for that disgustingness. <laughs> but I'm glad I could have inspired you in some way keyboard literally found in a mess at the side of the road and I picked it up for no other reason up here than going I can restore that because I've seen on YouTube how um, and that's led to why I've got an MTA 1200 case because I now have the confidence to go I could rebuild one of these from scratch and that's what I'm going to do and why I also have 
an empty A500 case as well. Even though I've got a perfectly good working A500, well, now I want to do a project where I put a gaming PC inside an A500, and that's why I've got a broken A500 case here. It's all your fault, Neil, and similar channels. Keep up the great work. Love it. Thanks. Well, thank you, Chris. That was a real whirlwind, wasn't it? Um, two immaculate looking Amiga cases there. I'm really interested in seeing your PC build. It's going to be a tight squeeze. Uh, I'm guessing you'll probably have the PSU, unless you're using a Pico PSU, you're going to have that outside the case. Maybe in the original Amiga um, power supply box, you could squeeze it in there. Don't know, I'd be interested to see what you do. There's, there's lots of people who are putting Raspberry Pis into cases because you can now just get an off the shelf converter to use the original Amiga keyboard with something like a Raspberry Pi or even a PC actually. So maybe you'll use that, but because the Pi is so small, people just seem to gravitate towards it instantly and go, yeah, I can put that in there. That's easy. So to squeeze a full blown PC in there is gonna be a bit more of a challenge and I'll be interested to see if you do it and what processes will be involved, whether it will be a hacksaw or a 3D printer to do the job. Um, but I'm so pleased to hear that I've somehow inspired you in some way and other channels uh, on YouTube have inspired you. It's always a pleasure to hear, Chris. So thank you for sharing that with us. And on the subject of the Batman pack, I didn't have the Batman pack. Um, I just got a straight Amiga that wasn't in any kind of pack. Uh, let me just grab something from up here. But I do have Batman somewhere and I do have uh, F-18 Interceptor, which Oh, I just love this. It still sends chills down my spine when this loads up and you have that, um, the bong noise, which is basically ripping off um, part of the Top Gun theme, you know, the bell. Um, it plays that at the start. I don't know, it was just one of those early sandbox games that just made you feel so much freedom and like you were really a jet fighter and the challenge of landing on the carrier Ah, I loved it. I loved everything about that game. And it, it was one of the earlier flight sims that got me so hooked on the whole genre. So the Batman pack was awesome. I don't know if you got those packs down in Australia, did you? Or was it more of a, uh, a UK thing? Be interested to hear a little bit more about Australian computer history. Um, I, I know uh, through Mr. Lurch's things and other channels like that, that the, was it the Dick Smith um, computer was popular down there, branded computer? Don't know, I'd like to learn more about Australian computing and computing from all around the world. Now, tomorrow, I've got a real treat for you. Do you remember Kevin Wiltshire sent in the RMC game on the ZX Spectrum and we had the title screen and we had one of the three mini games finished, which was Find Trevor, I think it was. Um, well, he's finished the game. He sent me the completed game with all three mini games, including the cleaning montage. I haven't played it any further than the menu screen to check it works because I want to give you my genuine reaction to it tomorrow and what the hell is cleaning montage going to be as a game. I'm looking forward to finding out. So we'll play that tomorrow. And uh, until then, have a lovely afternoon and evening and uh, I'll get back to the 3D printing. See you tomorrow, guys. Take care.